two black runners at the new generation, Butter Boys tailgate at UA Mission Run, Mission Control. It's really been a pleasure being at USA's for the first day, now on the last day. But Aaron, let's get into it. Yes, sir. Let's do it, man. I'm Joshua Potts, Mr. Pottsville, always with the brother with the same mother, Aaron Potts, Super Hot Potts, and with your favorite two black runners that come at you every single two black, two And it is the last day of USA's. We're behind Hayward Field at yes, the UA yes. Mission Control. It's really been, it's been nice. It's been, you've done that at least like five times during our trip here. Are you good, bro? I mean, sometimes, you know, Winnie Kaladi, she's joining us and she knows you got to dig deep, you know, in these times because you got to do it for the people, for the supporters, for the love, for the butter boys. So. I am tired. <laughs> <laughs> and like you said, what makes this journey so great for us and here to be at UA Mission Control, we get to speak to special athletes like Wayne Kaladi, who competed in USA's today with a fourth place in the 5,000 meters with a 1552. Wayne, you've been on a journey this season. We saw you race at Portland Track Festival, actually, when you went out there and you ran that 1457. I think about two weeks ago now, you were on a mission to go out there and make that world championship team. You fell a little bit short, but you were saying to me earlier that you're still feeling content on how your season has gone so far. Yeah, um, I wish if I could have, um, have a little more today, but... It just feels good. It just was in short amount of time how much I have improved and to come here and compete um, um, as much as I can. And um, I think uh, it, the went, the race went a little tactical, but I'm pretty happy the way how I went today. And you've been on a dark sky distance now for two years. How much do you think you or how much have you improved? You feel like this year compared to last year? Well, I have improved a lot, but um, this is this is not um, the um, the less like I still I'm like improving. I wanted to do more, and um, I wanted to get better every day. But I'm so thankful that how much I have come, like how far I have come, and um, improving every single um, race that I run basically. And you now I believe you've been in about like four or five U.S. championship races, and I've always been close to that line. What from this race have you really learned for you going forward? I know it was only about, what, three hours ago, but like you've been in these type of races before. What are you starting to learn a little bit more and more each time? Well, there's a lot of things to learn when you come in the championship race because um, it plays different. But I'm so thankful that to... Uh, make it this far and come compete with the best in the nation and give out everything I had and also getting so close that gives me a lot of confidence when I come back next time I'll be in the top three. And you've been a pro too, not very long now, but like Joshua said, you've been to a couple of U.S. championships. Do you feel like you're just starting to get the hang of having, you know, track and field be first outside of when you were in college? Um, can you repeat that question? I'm sorry. I was just going to say, do you feel like you're adjusted to the pro life now? Um, yes, because it's a different level. Yes, like in college, um, you compete with a lot of runners. It also built your confidence going to similar race. But and when you go up to professional, then it's like another level. So you get used to the tactical race and like how fast you can go at the end. Or there was like a lot of like really fast runners. How are you gonna be get close to them? So I feel like I'm in the right direction to just get um, get as they are. And what I'm really curious, Wayne, because like you ran the U.S. 10,000 meter championships at pre. You were in that race. You were competitive in that race, and also in this 5,000. Like, what, what, which one do you like more, the five or the ten? And also, just well, actually, too, like. You're a beast on the roads. Like we didn't, I was thinking we too. didn't even talk about that. So compared to the too. five, the ten, in the roads, do you have any type of favorite in those type of fields and those disciplines? Well, my favorite is the five k. Even 
that I can handle pretty well in the 5K and 10K. Uh, but I always like to run less laps on the track. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. So, I, I totally understand. Uh, yeah, with the red races, um, I feel pretty good about it, and I can't wait to move on soon. But for now, I'm just going to focus in track because that's like unfinished business. For me, I would like to see myself getting better on the track than on the road because if I run fast enough on the track, then road will be easier as I move on. Most definitely, most definitely for sure. And with just your teammates, you know, Sharon, when we had her on the podcast too, how much do they push you in practice and how much have they helped you get to this point? Um, it's been um, great. I would say like every single of the team have been a part of my journey. I just like love how they inspire me and um, it, like in, during every race, whether I have bad or good race, they're just like they're there for me. And then before we let you go, Wayne, I, we were talking about before about the other races that happened today. You were saying the women's, the, the men's 200 and the women's 800 really caught your eye. What was something significant from one or one or both of those races that really just made you see that those were super exciting on USA's on this last day? Um, I don't know. Every race was very competitive, but it was just the most exciting thing to watch. It just like he. You don't know who's going to get it. I just, like, get very excited when the race is that way. No, most definitely. I was holding my breath during that <laughs> 800 and then in the 200, seeing Noah Lyles, you know, smile at Ariane. That was, that was pure entertainment. No, most definitely. It brings you back to, like, that backyard at one point. You know what I mean? Like, really battling all the way to the line. And before, Wayne, we let you go, too. Do you have – do you, I know it's been a few hours, but do you have any thoughts of just – racing going forward are you th thinking about racing a little bit more into the summer and do something else well i then i'm not like 100 percent sure but i wanted to do one more 5k after this and mm. to see improve uh, if i can improve uh, my times and stuff but then i'm gonna take break and get ready for um cross country early in the season yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if you're out there again at Abbott Dash winning another 5K championship that you already done before. But thank you, Wayne, for joining us on the Two Black Runners podcast. We appreciate your time. Congratulations on your amazing season so far. And we're excited for everything you're going to do later in the season. Thank most you. Definitely. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> and thank you for having me. Yes, yeah, yes, Thank yes. you for coming on. Appreciate you. And next up, coming on the podcast, too, we got guests. We got real guests coming through this time. The guy that we got coming on next, he's newly signed as director of track and field at Auburn. He's also a former Olympian, like one of the greatest U.S. sprinters of all time. What a 986 personal best. Jeez. He's done it before, bro. This like, this is absolutely an honor right Come now. On. Leroy Burrell joining us on the Two Black Runners podcast. Wow. What's good, Leroy? Uh, not much, man. I, like, nice uh, smattering of applause there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he gassed you up on that intro, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I've always felt like uh, let's, uh, you know, tone down the intro and, uh, and play up the interview. So... You know, I, I try not to, not to get too hyped about that. So, well, I'm, I'm ready I'm a for this interview. Guy. I'm a low-key guy. <laughs> but before we get into USA's, I want to talk about like taking that job at Auburn, just leaving your former school. That that's a big step to go into the SEC. Like that's a competitive conference. Yeah. But you ready? <laughs> you ready for it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I look at it like this. Um, you know, I competed at uh, and, and coached at the University of Houston through some pretty competitive times. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, uh, you know, we, we brought our program to the point where we looked up at a couple of scoreboards and, the, and there were only one or maybe basically one SEC school that beat us. So I, I really don't see uh, the conference itself as yeah. a challenge. I see uh, a few programs that are very outstanding as a challenge. And, and we're going to try to build a program that can compete just like we did at Houston, and uh, the conference really doesn't matter. It never mattered there, and it's not going to matter now. You know, it's all about the athletes and the work and, the, you know, the, the talent and the, the resources and, and support and execution, and that's what we're going to go do. Early in the season, what is that thing that you tell your athletes to get them mentally prepared for everything that's coming? I, I don't even think it's an early-in-the-season thing. It's really a, a year-round thing. Um, 
you know, great teams have great culture, you know, and that culture is really about uh, work uh, and uh, effort, support, and um, and then uh, really expressing that uh, in a physical manner on the track or, or on the field or runway, whatever the case may be. Uh, so you have to try to build that throughout the year. Yeah. And then um, you want your athletes to, to get to a point where they rely on each other and they're expecting the best from each other. Uh, and so what you try to do is build on that energy, you know, and that, you know, that, that kind of constantly investing and supporting each other. And when, you're, when, you're, when you get that going really well, then you can get some performances that, that can lead to championships. And so that's what we're going to try to build at Auburn. Most definitely. We are live here at UA Mission Control with Leo Bar Leroy Burrell talking about USA's, talking about his new job at Auburn and that year-around mentality that you guys going. And speaking about year-around, what you guys are doing right now, Dontavious Hill making the world championship team in the high jump, 2.22 meters. NCAA season's over, but he's still getting that work in. He still has Auburn eligibility. How great is it to have a talent like that making that world championship team to get that experience to come back at Auburn next season? Well, I mean, I'm really excited for DT. You know, I mean, I didn't coach him. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be his future coach. Uh, so uh, Scott Richardson, the uh, current uh, field events uh, coach there, uh, has done a wonderful job with uh, with DT, and you know I'm really looking forward for for that opportunity for him. You know I think he still has a little work yet to do mm -hmm. uh, because I'm not sure whether he has a standard or not, and I'm not sure what the protocol is on that. Um, but nonetheless, uh, to come and you know, perform at your best uh, under the bright lights and big stage is is really big for him, and I think it really tells a lot about his future. Yeah, that's a that's a great look for the program, and that's super nice going in. Where do you, how do you find a leader on a team, especially stepping in as a new coach? How do you find that leader or that captain? Well, you, 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 first of all, you've got to be quick to find him. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, I think uh, when you've been doing this as long as I have uh, for you know twenty three years, that's a long time. You kind of get a good feel for people. Uh, and and uh, Dontavious was really quick to reach out to me, um, and uh, and I I told him you know, when I was excited that he reached out because I, I think some athletes you'll know, fall into one of a couple of categories. You know, you got the ones who really haven't been doing what they're supposed to do, so they're going to hide from you. You know, yeah. and you know they, they, when and when you when you present them with something new and a different challenge, you know they're they're not going to you know, they're not going to be want to want to deal with that. Um, and then you got some that will will want to hear you out, but you they feel like you have to prove something to them. You know, but then you got the ones who will take some time to look at your track record and uh, and see your the coaches I should say uh, accolades and some of the things that he 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 or she has been able to accomplish. Uh, not only just necessarily as a coach, but maybe even as an athlete themselves. And they say, well, I want to know what that guy knows. Mm -hmm. you know, I want to be with that guy. And that's, they'll seek you out. You know, and those are your leaders. You know, those are because mm -hmm. they want more. They're expecting to get something out of the relationship, and they're willing to seek that. And, uh, and uh, Don Tavius was one of the athletes who did that. And I was really excited when he was one of the first ones who reached out. That, that's awesome, especially for somebody that's doing so well right now to be not just leading by example on the track or in the field, but also doing it through the culture and just being on the team as well. And we, I feel like there's a lot of NCAA athletes out there right now that are doing that thing, especially in the sprints, has to be Abby Steiner, the performance that she put out there today. Jeez. Someone like Abby Steiner, especially if DT is able to get to that world championship stage, what advice would you give to an NCAA athlete? athlete that went through that indoor <laughs> that outdoor and now they still gotta go three more weeks to return back to Eugene to compete on the world stage well um, first of all I'm not sure if I can give any advice because uh, the, the situation at least with, with Abby and uh, and I think with Don, Don Tavius you know Abby's uh, you know, people her coaching staff and support you know they've put her in in, in great positions all year long mm -hmm. you know and so if, if there's any advice I'll give is keep doing what you're doing because it's working. You know, yeah. don't don't uh, don't mess with something. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, and uh, she ain't broke. No, you know, not at all. So leave that leave that thing alone. Uh, <laughs> let it do what it do. And actually, that's one of the things that uh, her coach Alani Smith, who's a very good friend of mine, he says that all the time. Let it do what it do. Yeah, and, and his whole team, he got a couple monsters on that team, yeah. man. 
Yep. So it's been it's been exciting to watch. But just speaking of the women's 200, Tamara Clark in second, Jenna Prandini in third. Were you surprised by that top three? Did you do you feel like it was an upset, or what, what are your thoughts on that race? You know, I, honestly, I really wasn't paying attention to it like that. You know, I mm -hmm. know who won. Um, I think I was scrolling through Squid, uh, the, the Twitter and, and and saw the race. But you know, my concern was for uh, you know the Auburn athletes athlete or athletes and former athletes who are, who are competing here and my former athletes at the University of Houston uh, who competed here you know I had um athlete in a triple jump well, one of my early athletes Chris Carter who uh, cramped up on his last attempt and mm. you know and so I, I was you know kind of feeling for him looking for him um you know so I, I when you're a coach you don't kind of watch the media yeah, as, a, yeah. as a as a fan or a spectator you, you watch the things you got to watch and then if you if you're if, if you got some time then you go watch it as a spectator so and I, I don't I don't particularly watch meets that way not not yeah. this particular meet. now if i came back for the world championships i probably would watch it in that manner but i gotta ask from you scrolling through like twitter and all that and seeing like the results just in the times was there anything throughout the entire weekend that really got you excited for what this person or possibly even a relay team could do mm -hmm. at the world championship stage um yeah i mean i think uh you know the 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 american team the u.s team uh the is, is stacked you know the the men's sprint group is deep wide strong long whatever you whatever whatever accolade you want to you want to apply there they they've got it you know they've got uh oh uh, fred curly is a dog yeah he's <laughs> he a is. straight dog he's right? a dog you don't play no games you know, i mean he, yeah he I, um I, I wish we could you know kind of well I wish we could mend him. You know, he's a, he's a <laughs> unbelievable guy and a, and a good good guy too. I think he's good for the sport. I think so too. Um, you know, <laughs> let you know a little secret. I I, I leaned over to uh, to his coach uh, Francique and I said, "Hey, you might want to run the four by four. <laughs> I would and, love to and, see that. Well, you know why? Because it's history. Yeah. You know, it'll make history. Uh, I don't think a, a U, one a single U.S. male has ever run uh, the one two uh, four by one in four by four. Uh, and won four. You know, there have be only crazy. been a, f a few that have won four gold medals. You know, you know that's elite company, Carl Lewis and Jesse Owens, and Fred has an opportunity um, at the world championship level. And if he can do it at the world championship level, then he can do it, um, you know, at the at the games. And so, and he he's capa fully capable of it, in my opinion. That would definitely make him into a legend. And we were talking, like, we were listening off your accolades, what you have done, and seeing, like, a 100 field as stacked as this, where the seventh guy was 998. We had third place 988, 985, and 977 with Fred. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel like, man, I wish I was in that 100 back? Like, do you ever feel like when you were back yeah. in the day or compare, or just feel like, mm -hmm. what would I have done if I had these super spikes with these guys? <laughs> <Had> <laughs> super spikes. At this tracks. nice stadium and track. Yeah, super stadium, yo. I mean, yeah, well, you know, I mean, here, I look at it, actually, I look at it like this. You know, I ran 985 with what we had. Yeah, you know? that makes your time so, faster. So I, I don't, you know, you can't compare eras. You just have to, uh, you know, understand when your time, that was your time, and now it's their time. And uh, we, we, we happen to enjoy a situation where there are actually a lot more quality coaching going on mm -hmm. uh, than there was at that time. There are more resources. You know, you got high speed video, you got all these biomechanists, and all, you got everything. Most definitely, yeah, yeah. Kids yeah. have everything to, to, uh, to help them uh, you know, achieve those goals. And so, yeah, I, I, but I, I really don't look at it like that. You know, I, 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 you know, I, I deuced it when it was time, time to go, and, and now. You know, been on to something else for a long time, and now I'm on Auburn to try to do, try to create a few of those. And actually, I had a former athlete of mine in that race, uh, Eli Hall Thompson, got mm -hmm. uh, got fifth. So, and I was really happy for him because that was he PR by over a tenth uh, of a second, and uh, that was his first uh, major final where he performed at that level. So I was really, really happy for him. Me and Joshua too, like. We, we ran in high school and in college, and now we're on the other side of the media in the mix zone, and we're making like connections with some of these athletes and becoming friends with them. So a lot of people were happy today, but we saw a lot of people who were disappointed, and we, we feel for them too in those moments. What do you tell an athlete that, you know, they didn't have the best day or they're just disappointed with the result on a big stage like this? Well, I mean, it happens to all of them. You know, and so uh, and that's what I think one of the first things you need to remind athletes that it's, it, it happens to everyone. All of all of us are going to get run out of it out of the game. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes uh, you, you're going to get run out permanently. You know, and then sometimes you're going to get run out, and you you might not have much more time uh, to work on it. But 
if you're going to stay in it, you have to understand it. Uh, and if you if you understand it, then what you do is, uh, you tell I tell them you, you got to go back and, and fix the problem that caused you to, you know, that caused you to not be successful at that particular moment. I actually I had this talk with one of my athletes today, a kid who was, uh, made the semis in the hurdle, uh, Davion Wilson, and he's first time here, you know. And I told him, you know, you, let, let's think back to all the times you didn't do what we were trying to do in practice, you know. And so you need to address that issue mm -hmm. uh, in in practice and in training, uh, and then strip it down to its bare bone minimum, you know, meaning you've done everything you can, you're capable of doing to be your best and then go out and compete. And the only variable is whether you whether you have the talent or not. But a lot of athletes don't want to get that real, you know, because yeah. there are people that are you, – you will line up against people that are far more talented than you. Oh, um, you, know, you just have to hope that, you know, they didn't do all of their stuff, you know, and, uh, and, the, and you, you're able to take, uh, take measure of them and, and take a skull that day, you know. That, but but that, that's, that's the nature of the game, quite yeah. honestly. You got to put yourself in the race, man. You're going to take some L's. You're going to lose more than you're going to win, mm -hmm. but – you just gotta put yourself in position, regardless. Mm -hmm. Hey, not not uh, not losses. They're lessons, bro. They're Ooh, lessons. Two okay. L's make a W. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. 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 I like that. I see yeah, you. Just, 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 it's a all a matter of perspective, right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, yeah, definitely. yeah. Different way to look for it. Mm -hmm. But we appreciate you, Leroy Burrell. Join us on the Two Black Runners podcast live from UA Mission Control SEC. They in trouble, man. They are definitely no in NCAA trouble. in trouble. That's what it sounded like when my <laughs> man was saying. Well, that's all I gotta say is <laughs> War Eagle. Hey, I love hey, you. I love you. I love you. Thank appreciate you so much you. for all coming right. on the podcast, coming through. We appreciate you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Let's take a quick break in the podcast for our next stop Oregon segment. And this is where for the past couple months we have been dedicating time to the first ever World Athletics Championships on US soil. From July 15th through the 24th in Eugene, Oregon at Hayward Field, we will have the first World Athletics Championships. And we were just at the US Championship seeing people, witnessing people qualifying and making that US team. We have a plethora of interviews on the Running Report YouTube channel you can check out right now so for this week on the next top Oregon segment i'm gonna give you a snippet into our interview with sinclair johnson who won her first u.s championship and has her eyes set to being that top american at the world athletics championships this summer enjoy this clip i remember like at the dmr pete was saying hey i want them to get the world record because i want them to recognize that union athletics yeah. we are a team yeah. that is like produces like the world's greatest yeah. athletes do you feel like the whole team is like, I feel like really embodying that now. You, you, you all made a statement. Yeah, I think so. I mean, so we have, I think, four, con yeah, no, no, sorry, three confirms of, I don't know how many athletes, but three confirmed going to the world champs. Raven's going to do her thing tomorrow. I know she's going to make that team, so that'll be four. Um, and we have a good, Charlie has a good shot making the team. So I think it just speaks for itself that, you know, we have over half our team representing their respective countries at the world level. And I mean, that's, I think, more as a percentage than any other group that I know. So I'm pretty excited to, like, have that kind of um, camaraderie and be around that kind of greatness. Yeah, and it definitely just felt like at Pre and with Ness now, you definitely took in that step to yeah. be like, hey, that is Sinclair Johnson. She's yeah. a top 1,500 meter woman. Do you, does that feel like a reality or is that something you always thought about yourself? Um, I mean, I feel like I've, I've thought of myself in this position um, and I was just waiting for that moment to really prove myself and I feel like now I've gotten onto the scene so um, yeah I'm just I just feel like where I'm supposed to I'm, I'm where I belong so yeah, yeah. we definitely <laughs> agree and excited to see you at World yeah thank, thank you. you thank you guys so much for watching that clip if you enjoyed that there's a playlist of the USATF championships from 2022 in our YouTube channel right now it'll be linked in the podcast audio and on the YouTube channel if you want to check that out right now but without further ado let's get back to the podcast from Hayward Field with the Under Armour Mission House. Hey man, Aaron, we're being joined by legends. Legends Yo, here on the definitely. podcast, here from Under Armour Mission Control. If anybody else really wants to come through, y'all could come through. Oh, okay, oh, here we man, go. This man, just clap his head, just coming oh, through. Hot. Two, Boy, two hot. minutes with two black runners. Yo, the one, the one and only, Ben, ben. Crawford. Which this, mic do I talk into? 
Uh, e- either either of the mics, but uh, Ben, what what do you want to talk about, bro? I just want to talk about the races today. Which which race? Which race excited you the most from the day? We we talked about some of the sprinting events. We went, we haven't went into any. We went into the five five k. We didn't go into the eight or a little bit. What event do you want to talk about? We want to discuss. I think shout out to Brandon Miller. Hey, uh, yeah, shout out Brandon Miller. I think you know getting third at NCAA's and then third at at USA's. I think is you know, it's hard to do. But it's, it's also, like, from a mental perspective, too. Like, you know, you'd expect a collegiate kid to make the world's team. You'd expect him to be the NCAA champion. Yeah. Um, like, I don't know, just based off, you know, past qualifications and whatnot. But I think he stuck his nose in it. Be an Olympic bronze medalist, Clayton Murphy, got yeah. him at the line. Uh, I think a lot of the young guns really stepped up this uh, – this USA Outdoors. I mean, even looking at the finals, there's a lot of kids were in college. I think it's Baylor Franklin, fifth place. Yeah. Ole Miss guy. Uh, you know, there were a lot of guys in that that prelim and that semifinal too, who were repping their college jerseys. Uh, shout out Cole Sprout in the yeah 5K making it. Uh, Lalo Herrera was there. Connor Lalo Mance like Nir, Abdi Hamid. Uh, Abdi obviously, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, Connor but, Mance with that fourth place finish. He's a recent college grad. Really on Brandon Miller, though, like, you got to think, this dude was a prodigy. I remember yeah. doing club track. I was at Nationals. First time I seen this dude, I was, how old was <laughs> I? I was, like, 11 years old. It was in Missouri. This dude won the 1500, and he, like, shushed the camera. His I was like, this too, dude's man. going places. And he did. He definitely going places. People were talking about him like all in like the let's run comments and everything. Like this dude's a bust. All these type of stuff. And he though. has finally like even if he would have got fourth place in this race, those comments would have still been getting thrown out. Like he has a fish I, in my eyes. No one can ever say that this man didn't reach the potential that he possibly did. At the like, remember when back in the day that flow track video was like prodigy. This man really, he's the definition no, of that. Yeah, he is, bro. And like, I think back to so like last year at NCAA's Isaiah Isaiah uh, Jewett beats him, and that was an amazing race. And then he comes back and he wins indoor this year. His outdoor season was a little rough at times, you know. Yeah, yeah. With uh, Zahafi kind of stole the show. And like in the middle of the season, it felt like he kind of got stuck at a, like at a couple times, and then he didn't end up winning NCAA's. But as Ben was saying, to beat Clayton Murphy, to beat uh, Isaiah Harris, like that's those are some real deal pros. Yeah, that's huge. That's huge. And he always goes out in front, and he just hangs on, and he runs at the 800 tr- traditionally, where going hard on that last 200, like a club kid is taught to do. <laughs> and so I always love seeing that. But then Bryce Hoppel winning the 800. There's then one, is one, he taking over? I think you got to at least throw his name out there for that. I think uh, there was a, a lot of buzz around this weekend. People kind of saying like, oh, the 800 kind of up for grabs. It's kind of wild. But one name that was consistently there, people say they don't know who's going to make the team. They're like, you know, Bryce Hoppel's going to race well. Yeah. And now you think back to what, two years ago, three years ago, we had that like 20 some race winning yeah, streak. Yeah, like, yeah. We need to bring. We need to talk about that more. Like that was that was crazy. Wait, we need to talk to this man right here. Will Lear, you got you got you got some checks. You got some questions to answer, bro. <laughs> we gotta talk to you about some things, man. Hop wait, on wait. here. Ben, you can stay too, but we got we gotta talk to Will Lear. Will Lear was in our first one on Thursday, and uh, Aaron and Aaron and Will were going back and forth <laughs> a little bit about the men's fifteen hundred. The men's fifteen hundred finally happened, and. Uh, I think we should discuss it for a second. I think we should definitely scoot over and let Will get in here a little bit. Yo, I'm goldfish brain. I already forgot what happened. (laughs) Yo. (laughs) Hey, man. So I just want to talk about Cooper. You were saying he got lucky in the semi. I was saying he looked the best. But did he get lucky in the final? No, that was textbook. You hear this voice? This is is him (laughs) screaming for Cooper. Yo, we're all Cooper fans. No, yeah. Yeah, big Cooper stand over here. But um, no, that, that was a... Textbook championship race, you know, and uh, he timed it perfectly. Saw him last night. He was happy with his performance. I'm happy for him. How do you feel just about that that race, though, too? Going so slow, kind of looked like the old school, uh, like an old school race, bro. Yeah, it's and championship racing. Got Jonathan Davis in there, college guy. Yeah. Crazy performance. Does anyone know, has he run 334 today? <laughs> If I were him, I would have put a race together with him and Eric Holt. I would have gone somewhere just down the road. <laughs> South Eugene High School. Yeah. Well, no, not South Eugene is the slowest track on the face of the earth. Um, but that's why I ran that 114, bro. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it's also short, but that's fine. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, interesting storylines. You know, when when you have guys finishing in the top three that, that don't have the time, 
and uh, we'll see what happens. Johnny it's sort of like the, the final final rankings come out on Wednesday, um, and so his fate will sort of be sealed by World Athletics at that point. So does that mean Yared will will get the third spot? Uh, jo- Johnny Gregory. Oh, Johnny. No, but Johnny has the world standard. Yeah, yeah, and so does Cooper. It's saying at least on the results, Yared's the third person. Oh, but Josh Thompson's standard. already like in the ranking. Josh oh, okay. Yeah, to, yeah. to get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true, so, true. So. The, the presumed team at, at this moment in time is Cooper, Johnny, and Josh. Um, but Wild mix. Wild mix. Would not have guessed that to be the, the team going in. But no, but I mean, I put a lot of big bets in in, uh, in Vegas. so I heard there was a betting section at the meet today. Whoa. There's a betting section at the meet every day. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to find where you're sitting. I need yeah, to know where that's it's, at. It's, it's, uh, it's the old school Yamel Toads, man. These guys, they, they roll in hot. They put uh, on a do- every race has a dollar bill. You put your projected time and you write your name on a dollar bill and whoever has the the nearest time to the appropriate winner wins all the cash well, dang. dang wow how many dollars like how much right you win now. how much you win my pockets are empty <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's, okay that's not good at all but also I, we were watching the women's 800 and i was, I was like yes yes i'm about to talk to will about this <laughs> the oh, last man. 50 meters but i was say i think i think we've, we've i feel like we've all seen it over the course of the years i feel like ajay has really been putting herself like purposely in the position of running in the back you know like purposely trying to stalk people when she goes to these races that she's just not going to be able to lead over keely and the thing anymore and she definitely gave a thing the run for her money like the closest a thing race since she battled raven rogers in that 1600 american indoors back in like 2019 2018 that's the closest i ever seen her in a race like since then but besides when she ran the 400 back in ncaa's additionally i think this uh, this might be one of the only times i've ever seen ajay's face go from <laughs> yeah literally just chilling to like I want this. Yeah, I, want I agree. She wanted and to when win. When she swung wide, I mean, that, that's where my voice went. I was, I lost it. I'm like, why not you, Ajay? Go for it. <laughs> I mean, it's it's the uh, it's the former queen of of the 800. I mean, she had so many years of being dominant on top, and a thing is obviously insane. She's so good, but um, yeah, I, I mean, Ajay took a shot. That, that's that's the way the race went. I, it was really funny when the girls came down the back stretch for their victory lap. I was sitting with her and some of her training partners. And I then came over, and she's like, I'm not a pace setter. And I was like, that's fire. I was like, everyone expects her to go out in, like, 55 because she can jog a 55. But, no, she was playing with people today. It was it – was, that was probably my favorite race of the day. Yeah, that was a uh, hold your breath type race. And to top it off with, like, Madeline Manny Mims, like, being on track side and, like, having the hug of all three of those ladies just to see, like you were saying, the three greatest 800-meter runners of all time we're witnessing every single time they line up to the line. Then with Madeline Manny, that was just, like, such a special moment. Like, I hope that needs – yeah, that needs to be in museums at there this were, point. There were a lot of special moments today. I mean, there were a lot of special moments this weekend. Uh, we wish we would have had more fans in the stands, obviously. We all want that. But there's, we've got Worlds coming up. Hopefully the stadium's packed out every single day for that. Um, but we saw top to bottom today in races, just like some absolutely incredible results. Times that you're seeing get second and third at USA's, you've never seen before. Yeah. Absolutely never seen. And so that was, that was super exciting. It was awesome to see uh, Noah Lyles, who wasn't sure if he was going to run, come back be put under pressure and then low key yeah like who'd you call no who'd you call? i saw him after, again saw him after i was like you're gonna pop over the pod and he's like no, you gotta pay me now i was like <laughs> oh damn damn i was like all right big time i see you <laughs> i think it was i was personally like pleasantly surprised emma coburn mm-hmm. winning the steeple uh i mean that what that's 10 u.s titles for her that's i mean you think about in the grand scheme of things she's really transformed that that event um for the u.s and i think uh, even with someone like Courtney Wamick coming onto the scene, you know, runs a PR of, of 9.12, it's just... Uh, Dang, that's what she ran? She ran 9.12 today? Yeah, yeah like it was think, fast. I think uh, Courtney Ferrex was 9.16. Yeah, it was, yeah. you know, I think also it's interesting as well that uh, you look at this new guard coming in, but, but you know, Courtney and, and Emma, still Courtney Ferrex, and Emma still still holding strong, especially where there was, I feel like, a lot of question marks around Emma Coburn. Mm-hmm. And if she, uh, you know, like, she battled with some injuries, um, kind of had a couple down years after winning that world title, and to see her return to form and, and win that race, I think really puts an exclamation point on her career. Um, same with Evan Jagger. Yeah, I was going to say able to come thing. back. Like, those are the two, think of the two, like, I mean, they're both Olympic medalists, and they uh, have really changed the the dist- or the steeplechase scene in America. Forever. And then, shout out Duncan Hamilton, Montana State, yeah. in fourth place. There's 
I don't know. His teammate and his teammate, um, Levi, Levi Taylor, got seventh place. Dang, something they got something going on in Bozeman, man. Some, something's on the uh, something's on the water in Montana. I mean, I'll, let me just touch on a couple of those. You know, for those of us who know Emma well, we watch her train. I get to watch her train often. Um, was not surprised by the race today, but still, you have to execute, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and what I love about Courtney Waymont's race is that she stepped on the line today and said, "If I run the race that I'm capable of, I'm on this team." That yeah. was her goal, was, was making the team. And she has two of the best stewards of any event in, in Courtney and Emma that she gets to basically now follow to Eugene. And it does, it, it is an immense bonus to an athlete to have great role models. And Emma's an incredible role model. Courtney's an incredible role model. They've been there. They've won their medals, Olympic and world champion. And, uh, you know, it's, that is, I'm excited to see what Courtney does in her career. Um, yeah. For Evan, I think in his post-race interview, when he said this is one of the, this is the one of the top three races of his life, that's just telling to the struggles that he's had for the last four years, and those are, those are the athlete stories I think oftentimes get I mean, mm -hmm. passed over because you know, someone ran a you know Sydney with a world record or whatever. you know it's like obviously incredible but like that guy that's our American record holder coming back from being literally I mean the best in the world at one point in time to fighting to make his way back onto a team and yeah. that being one of his marks of success in his career is so telling. For sure. And Evan is such, both those two people you mentioned, Evan and Emma, they're fan favorites. Everyone really, really loves them. And you saw the emotion in the mix zone, saw the emotion from Emma talking about everything she's battled. And the same, the same with Evan, just on the track, just laying there so happy to have made it. And yeah, it makes me really happy to see that because they really did build up the steeplechase in America. And then, as you're saying, with uh, Levi Taylor, and Duncan Hamilton, you know, taking that. Shout out to Hillary Bohr, too, and Bernard Keeter. They're also teammates. Yeah, it's like yeah. we have a future in this event that we're building towards. I think it was crazy. Like, when we talked to Hillary Bohr, Hillary Bohr was mentioning that, like, he knows that Evan Jaeger isn't, like, 100%. Like, you know, this isn't Evan Jaeger, like, Super Saiyan. You know what I mean? Like, he, he can't reach that level yet. He can't reach Super Saiyan 2 at this moment. But once he gets there, like, he's ready for that competition once that finally happens. But and Hillary Bohr, three-time, like, national champion, he's definitely looking to get onto, like, that world, like, stage, to get onto that metal podium him once he gets to the worlds but it's definitely going to be hard for anybody to crack in because the steeplechase is just they're breaking eight like like kit kats now like you feel me yeah and like when we're talking to hillary too though i think he had a good strategy because uh he he struggles a lot with getting food poisoning when traveling and things like that and you say at the olympic trials last year he was really nervous and this year was just another race for him and a lot of his races were overseas this year so he gets get used to that, get used to going against that international competition. He wasn't seeing as much that's breaking eight. And now they got to come face him and Eugene. So I'm excited to see how much he's going to improve. No, it's going to be something special for sure. But yeah. I think, Will, you want to go uh, rest your voice? and I should, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How about those? How about those five Ks, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's Take get into it. Special, special. Let's get into it. Let's oh, get think, into it. Yeah, Does the, the toe want to get up here, though? So you're telling me there's a chance. God, I don't know. He looks like he's struggling. <laughs> Fit of the tailgate. Billy Sebeko. I love it. What, what, what did you enjoy about the meet today? I'm going to tell you that after the meet, um, someone gave a thing mo a uh, four-foot toad, and she did a whole lap around there, and every picture she took after her race was a big stuffed animal toad. Wait, did, so was you the someone? I was not the someone. No, no. I saw her at the very end, and she goes, look what they gave me. That's great for the brand. And I was like, yeah, I mean. She said, still a toad. That's what she said. <laughs> you Yeah, she used to wear that in high school. I was a big honor. So that was cool. Um, I, think that the, I think that the 100 was insane. No allows pointing at him right there. I was, I was watching that, you know, we were in there. We were on that um, uh, first turn, and you saw those guys, like, literally, they wouldn't be in the same camera shot together. They were getting, they were getting mad. He went to give him a hug. He pushed them off. There was some beef there, which is kind of cool, but it's the difference between, I think, the sprinters in the sport and the distance runners. All distance runners are like hugging each other, even if they didn't make it. And the sprinters have some real, ass, real beef, man. Um, well, that was kind of cool. What happened at the? Because we were in the mix zone. What What happened when they were on the mic and Arion said something and walked away and they were laughing? I didn't hear what he said, but he's just. I think he, he said like he's scared or something, and he just put it down. I don't know. And he walked <laughs> right in. And then when they did the lap with the flags, he uh, went over to the side where they started. He went like this and waved, and then he just walked right into the tunnel. He didn't do the la like the victory lap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so there's definitely some beef, but I think. You know, I like to see everyone be friends, but I think it's cool that uh, 
the sport needs more rivalry. I think like when like I like the Central Craig Engels thing because they both it created a little bit more of a I don't know. Well, what is a story, I guess. Isn't what did Ariane tell you at Prefontaine that he wanted to be Aaron? He told me he wanted to be the villain. Cause everybody, every that's, cra that's crazy. Yeah, he told me he likes being the villain. Cause, cause uh, <laughs> everybody, uh, you know, yeah, that's savage to say, right? <laughs> you know, everybody the dislikes the villain though until they get to know him. You know what I mean? Like the Super Joker. Gremlin. Well, Noah Lyles has a cartoon where he's the superhero, right? Like he has one of those anime. They, oh, they made him an anime uh, that's film. That's true for the Olympics. So, yeah, I think that's the, the classic like superhero villain. But I think it's good. I don't know. You want to see everyone get along, but I think that, that like I said, that adds anticipation. They're going to talk about that next time. That next race is going to be lit because of their little rivalry there. Um, so I think that's good. And then what was I going to say? The other thing is, I love a thing, Mo. She's awesome. But to see Ajay compete, I think. Yeah. I yeah. think uh, what's her name? Keely Hogan Hodginson. Um, I think Mo and Ajay Wilson are probably going to be the three in worlds, and it's going to be amazing. Um, I'm excited for that. I'm still holding on to that USA sweep with Raven, man. Oh, that would be awesome too. Yeah, that, that USA awesome sweep, too. but Keely, yeah, Keely yeah, is hard yeah. to battle. Yeah. But that US, that USA sweep coming. I, one of these years, that USA sweep. Bring the brooms, bring the brooms to Eugene, just in case, man. Bring the brooms to Eugene. I think that would be amazing. Also, I mean, magic. I mean, she's on. Raven's on the on the stack. I think she'll have a little extra magic in there for that. She always has some magic. The last 100, yeah. the last 50 meters. I don't know how she just busts out of nowhere every time. So if she's in the right position. Who knows? Who knows what could happen? Speaking of busting out in that last, did you see Woody Kincaid's last? Oh my God! 224 or 227 was his last 1K. Got ripped. Disrespectful. Like yeah. he ripped. Like he was out of nowhere. Grant was just chilling by himself, and then Woody's like, "What? Let me try." I'm really surprised Paul Chalimo didn't make the team. I think going into it, at least, you know, some of what I heard was it'd be people, a lot of people were saying Woody Grant and Paul. Like those guys were, I mean, especially look at Paul's championship racing uh, record. Sometimes he doesn't always have it during the regular season, but I mean, man's got two Olympic medals. Like he's always up there. Um, and so I think, yeah, for Abdi to come in and get that spot, that's huge. It's huge for the young guard. Um, you know, that's. That's always where my head's at. Is like, you know, who's next? Who's up next? Um, and I think, yeah, Abdi stepped up. Big yeah. time, big time. And talking awesome. to him in the mix zone, he's like, bro, I want to see how high I can place in the world. Like, you know what I mean? What's he, next? Yeah, exactly. And he was still, like, super grateful and really embracing the moment and was, like, shocked. But at the same time, he was like, I want to know what's, I want to know where I can place in the world, man. And I think this really shows that this guy, this guy is, he's here. He's arrived. He has, he has, and I think, yeah, you think about Sinclair Johnson, she's here. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. Speaking of that, we got to talk about Brandon Miller. Yeah, 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 on, we, yeah, yeah. We talked yeah. about that oh, a little man. bit. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I missed that. No, 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 go in. in. Yeah, Brandon Miller, he, he laid, bro. He laid on the ground for like 50 seconds after because he fell. He, well, he, he dove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he laid down, and every, I thought he was hurt, and he just laid there, and as soon as his name came up, he... He bounced up and was like, let's go. And I'm yeah, like, that was, no that way. Was dope. So like, that must be some crazy emotion. Crazy yeah. emotion. And, and what you said was taking down a big guy. You and Clayton know, Murphy. Yeah, so Chalimo's always great in championships. Well, Clayton and Murphy's Murphy. the best at it. Don't hear about him for a while. Boom, wins He's USA. There. Boom, gets a bronze medal in the Olympics in the eight, you know, back in 2016. That's, like, crazy. That's still, like, crazy. Is yeah. Bryce Hopple taking over that, that stand? Like it I don't know. Bit. I don't know. Bryce had, Bryce had, like, I feel like he had a... He won so much that everyone was expecting him to just continue to win that he didn't do as well, I think, as I would have liked him to see him do um, on, in, the, in the Olympics. So yeah, he, needs yeah, the, yeah. he needs that needs that moniker on the world he, stage yeah. now. That's the next step He's for amazing. him. He's amazing. I'm not hitting yes, yes, him at yes, all, yes. but it was a big letdown because you just expected it. Yeah. You know? Um, so that's why I like Clayton Murphy. You kind of weren't expecting that. I mean, he was he was very vocal about people not, you know, sleeping on him. But, um you didn't expect it. He, he didn't have the, the races that he has been having, but he always shows up in championships. So for B, B. Miller to take him down, that's huge. I feel like we got so used to Donovan Brazier winning every single 800. Literally. That now it's just like, it's just kind of weird. It's like, or just like, there's just so many different people with him not in the race, you know, like Jonah Coage, no one was saying that name. No. Yeah. That, that he was going to make the team. And then last year, like Isaiah Jewett, what he did, you were like, what? That's crazy. So is he going to be a guy? He ran 50 flat for his middle 400 of his 800. Do you know that? That's crazy. So you know how like the first, yeah, yeah. they normally go out and like 50 for the first one, and then there's that that's third through 200 is rough, and then yeah, you close yeah. hard? <laughs> yeah. He ran 50 flat for that middle 400. Dang. And I think they went out in 50. So I think he that's ran like sick. a 50, and then it kept that pace going for another 200. Yeah, that's that's wild. That's wild. That's U wild. USA 800 meter running 
It's crazy. It most definitely is on the men and the women, but we're at, we're live at Two Black Runners here at Under Armour Mission Control. I gotta call somebody up to the stand. Tierra Williams, real talk. T, get up here. T, come through. Let's come see through. what you gotta say. Toad signing out. Yer. Yer. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Hey. hey, but hey, T, I seen Trey. Was that that was Trey doing hitting the gritty? No, that was no, Trevor. That, that was Trevor, my oh, bad. That was Trevor. Man. Bro, don't yeah, do that bad, to them. Man. Don't Trevor, do that Trevor. To them. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Doing that to, I'm just saying. Hey, Trevor, hitting that gritty, making that second place in the 400-meter hurdles. A big PR, 47. 47 for my guy. This dude, D2 product out of That's college, crazy. making that 400 hurdles. You saw him hitting the gritty. What did you think of that 400-meter hurdle race? It was crazy. It was crazy, but I can tell he was excited to make his. And that's the second world team. Yeah. This year. Yeah. Like he made it indoors in the open four, and then he was able to come out and get it in his own event. That's that's powerful. Like that whole race was good. Raj was cool. He was smooth, just doing his thing. You know, he just with a flex one time. But yeah, it was a fire race. And you've had Trevor on Real Talk before. Mm -hmm. So what what was it like to like just see him get that? Amazing, amazing. Like it, it low key felt like. I, I like was you won? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was yeah, yeah. In, his, in his journey for sure. So it was amazing. It was so, amazing. Also, what did, so what did you think about that women's 200? Like, that was a crazy. I don't think a lot of people had that, that team put together. That's our sport. What can we say? So, track is always full of surprises. Like, you could come out here with a prediction if you want to, but it would really shut you up. Yeah, but Abby, she's sweet. She hit us with a little dance at the end. Like, she was really <laughs> feeling that. it. She was excited. So I'm happy for her, for sure, for her to be able to come on the biggest stage and get another gold medal. You know, that's, that's fire. And I really feel like it was a long time coming because I don't think a lot of people were paying attention to, like, when she had her injury last year, like, during, like, mm -hmm. the Olympics. But that indoor season, like, she was killing it. And I was excited to see what she was going to do outdoor. Then she, like, you know, fell off the face of the earth because she wasn't running, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But now for her, like, to come out, that redemption has to feel sweet. Definitely at 2177. Sick. It's sick. Sick. It's sick. Is she going to be able to compete with Jamaicans? Yes. Uh, yes, come on now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, man. I think, think twenty one seven was that a national record? I think it was a national record too. No, it was a national record. It was it? No. World lead. World, World lead. lead. World lead. Oh, okay. Personal w best. W w well. And she ran twenty one eight in the semi. She just kept getting faster. Yeah. It's like she definitely keep. People have had so many questions about about Abby, but bro, you can't you can't really say nothing. She really is. She really is a uh, that girl. Yeah, she really is that girl, to be be honest. You can't deny it. But I'm also super happy for Tamara Clark. When she was at Alabama, she was a beast, bro, mm -hmm. winning NCAA titles. And I feel like she struggled a little bit at first with going pro. But for her now to make this team, because I don't think a lot of people had her on their list at all, mm -mm. that's that's super big for her. And Jenna Prandini. Yeah. Well, she's just consistent, you know what I mean? She knows the game. She knows Hayward Field, just like how Raven got it, and just like how my guy De Devin Allen also got on that team, barely, barely on going on to that. That was that was scary, definitely for somebody that's looking to break. The I thought we were going to see a world record for a second, but then almost barely missing that team. I was like, man, those OTAs? I don't know. I don't know. Those OTAs, I don't know. But he definitely showed up in the big – big moment but specifically for Daniel Roberts I think the narrative has always been like has he's not been the same since he's left Kentucky but to show up and get a national championship with Grant out of the race but like mm -hmm. to still get the title show up in that big moment has to be big for him definitely that's big I'm, I'm sad we didn't get to see Grant though yeah I'm sad we didn't get to see that in the race but I mean that was a big moment for sure like they, they got out like Trey Cunningham I, looked good good Feeling good. Like, he told me before the meet, he was just like, I'm ready to whoop some A. I said, okay. Hey. Like, the energy. We need that energy. I really think at this moment in time, like, we can see four Americans in that final. And we can see, like, four Americans, like, one, like one, two, five, six, or something in, in that type of matter. Like, I think that's what it's going to end up being, especially if Grant and Devin, like, keep on projecting upward towards and closer to that world record, or possibly. I think the world record, it has to go down this year, especially with Devin Allen. If he ain't coming back and running more, like, that has to be the mission. That has to be the goal, especially if this is going to be his last season. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I definitely want to see the world record, but I also want to see Serenity up here because she has some she has some things to say about the 200 yesterday. Let me tag bro. her in. Let me tag her in. 
you gotta you gotta answer you gotta answer all that thing all those things you were saying distance expertise i got Randy coming in too you look shocked by the 200 when we saw you in the mix zone i was shocked by the prelim because of Gabby, obviously. Yes. And I saw that she tweeted that she's been dealing with a hamstring injury, so that's mm. unfortunate. I really didn't know that because she's been overseas. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, And, you know, my prediction went Abby, Gabby, Jenna. So that really definitely mixed it up a little bit for me. It was surprising. Well, you were right about Jenna. Like, I know. You I'm never bet. bet never bet. Uh, don't bet against her. Like, she knows how to not. make these teams. She got she out. Very got consistent. Out. And I think what a lot of people don't, understand about Jenna is that she perseveres because she's been dealing with the foot injury forever honestly and it's one of those things where it's not going to heal mm. so she just kind of learned how to just deal with it and she makes every team and one thing that we haven't talked about yet but I think would be super interesting because we weren't we weren't here on the first day right. we got to talk about the women's 400 and the men's 400 as well the farewell tour that the queen Allison Felix has been in she finished fourth finished fourth in the 400 gonna be in that real oh fifth in the 400 my bad and six. gonna be six six in the Allison she, she is six. oh she finished six man <laughs> right. I, I, that's surprising <laughs> to me that's hard for me that's hard for me to say you know what I mean that's hard for me to say that that's not normal but she's still gonna be hopefully I'm pretty sure she's going to be in that relay pool in a mixed relay Got a four, on four by four. But really just in the women's 400 in, in total to have Talitha, Talitha Diggs go out there. <laughs> I feel like this is could be the start of something new. This could be a streak possibly. I don't, I don't 19 know. 19 years old. 19. Talitha is 19 years old. 19 That's years crazy. 50.22 after winning in C's. That's amazing. I think, I think it's really going to be – she has the potential to do really well at World Championships. It's going to be hard to get into that podium. It always is in the 400-meter hurdles, especially especially to get that gold with, like, a Shawna Miller-Raybo always out there and chasing you. But like you said, 19 years old, for her, it's going to be super big. And someone else that's kind of still young, Aaron was kind of throwing shade at Michael Norman in the mix zone. What? Because you're calling him a veteran, and he was like, bro, I'm still young. How is that like, shade, though? Bro, I was just saying. saying. He was taking was it saying. like shade. I he think was we taking forget. it. He's oh. like 24. Yeah, he's 24. Yeah. I was just saying, like, bro, you've been to an Olympics, shape. you've been to a world championship. Now you're about to go to another world championship. He's like, a veteran runner. But I think com like, compared to your your teammates are champion Allison and Randolph Ross. Like, they both in college. But I'm just saying, I think this is gonna be the year that Michael Norman reaches that pinnacle. I know yeah, Stephen yeah. Gardner has been on a tear when it comes to world championships. Stevie. This man does not lose. Like since like 2016, 2019, he has won like world championships, Olympics, and the other world championship he has run every single time when it's on to that level. But I don't know. Michael Norman has been running so consistent this year. He may just be too too good at this point. Because looking back at 2019, when he ran that 40, why are you, why are you looking at that tee? Because that, that Michael different. Like he said, <laughs> he, is he was mad that he opened up with 44-1. Yeah. Because I was pissed. I was pissed. <laughs> like, what? Like, make it make sense. Him and Randolph both have that mindset. Mm -hmm. Even at NC's, he was just kind of like, yeah, the time was trash. I'm like, well, what are you expecting for yourself? He said, I want 42. And 42? Literally, he just he wants the 42. World so having that mindset, I feel like you're built different. Honestly, and I don't know. Have you guys noticed Michael Norman has put on weight? Oh, yeah, he's, 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 he loves been, lifting. He's been, he's been oh, no, getting he's up there lately. He's big. Yeah, he's big. Is that the secret? He loves the weight room. He's I big. mean, I think we're he's gonna get he's gonna get something in the four. He's gonna get this medal in the four. Hopefully, gold. Then maybe we might see him in some other events. You know what I'm saying? That's Putting true. on that weight. I'm surprised he didn't try to do the 200 also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gave Fred a good run for his money earlier in the season. Yeah, I'm so outside. the fact that he decided not to go out for the 200 was interesting. But I think champion Allison is definitely – well, Randolph Ross, we've already seen what he's been able to do. But champion right. Allison running that 43-7, that's number 10 ever. Number that's 10 amazing. all time. I don't think people are really talking about that enough. And just – especially Randolph Ross, what he ran last year too when he ran that 43. Like these – the guys that we have now and the contingent that we're going to put together just in the 4x4 in total has potential to run really, really fast. But, like, Champion and Randolph, like, they're just scratching the surface. And we already know, like, Michael Norman's basically scratching the surface. I think when he came out, he ran that first, like, 43-4. Like, people are like, world record watch. It kind of died a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, like, keep... <laughs> Loki, keep that conversation going. I know we still want him to get that gold first, but like world record watch and the, having the, the aspirations of the 42 is all like, that's going to just continue. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just feel like being great at the 400 is really hard. We got it is tough. so, I the 400. It was horrible. we <laughs> got so used to LaShawn Merritt, you know, doing his thing. And then we had Jeremy Warner before that. 
and then even that's even further back but michael johnson as well but now we have like this new like if you go back to that results list wave. look at michael norman like you said 24 champion allison he's at florida randolph ross north carolina a t elijah goodwin uh tennessee yeah <laughs> elijah godwin georgia noah williams could be at L lsu still bro yeah and then we have a ucla a ucla guy in here as well it's like our team is young it, is he Vernon Norwood is the is the I don't know how old Vernon is. Vernon Norwood well, if you is like think the about it, Michael, Michael Cherry has to buy. Yeah, yeah, he, he has to buy. He's gonna be That's at Worlds already, and he's gonna be on the four by four, and he's along with Vernon, one of the oldest in the field. That's crazy. With, in the four hundred. What's, what's Michael like? Twenty uh, six. I want to say twenty six, twenty seven. Michael Cherry. Yeah. Oh, maybe I don't know. I think, uh, okay. I feel like twenty six, twenty seven. <laughs> <laughs> Joshua the one throwing shade, man. I'm not throwing, I'm not throwing shade. I just I really didn't know. I really didn't know, to be honest. And then what was really special, I think, too, the women's 100-meter hurdles. I think watching the journey yeah. of Aaliyah Armstrong oh has been God. super special. You know, I went to yeah. middle school with her. What? It's crazy. Yeah, crazy. Like, all the way in wow, California. Wow, wow. I was in California, though, so I went to middle school then. Now, I was all like, last year, I seen her at the Olympic trials. I was like, wait, wait, that's Aaliyah? Hold on, like that that was crazy and special to see her make that team, but especially even like Alicia Johnson as well for her, like you you guys definitely be on Twitter to be and like her Absolutely. her aspirations to get that sponsor and mm -hmm. to show that she's definitely worth it, not just for what she does on the track, but the personality. Like she was having fun yeah. in the mix zone and was definitely Lele, Lele. showing it off. Her uniform I mean? was fire though too. Lele, yeah, the uniform was nice. I've been following her since she was at Oregon originally. And I was like, this, you know, this is technically your home track. And she said, yeah, she's just defending her title. So from Oregon to Texas Tech, and then she took some time off, and now she's back. So that's an amazing journey, honestly. Yeah, we used to be uh, teammates, actually, me and Lily. Oh, really? So, yeah, like, she said that her time at Texas Tech was, like, the time of her life. Like, mm -hmm. she said it was so fun. And um, just watching her story is truly inspiring because, like, she really didn't have the support coming out of college. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She had to take a couple time off. And now she's training in Austin. So mm -hmm. I feel like the, deal, the deal's coming. The deal's coming. The I deal's like it's on absolutely the way. It's coming. packed up on the way. And as far as Aaliyah, she's just the definition of hard work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, humble, hard work, faith in God. Like, I, I love me some Aaliyah. I love me some Aaliyah. I love me some Lele. Like, them the girls. Now, yeah. this conversation, though, Lele, I think, is the only woman in, like, the past two years that has beaten Jasmine Camacho Quinn. Yeah, Kenny Harrison beat Lele yesterday. He ran that 12-3-4 world lead season best. And I feel like Kenny has been on a run where every single time she, like, she races, she's not really happy with the performances. She's but not. you got to be kind of happy with that first place finish and the world lead. Mm -hmm. Can Lele or Kenny take down Camacho Quinn? Absolutely. I think that Kenny is just always, it's not that she's not happy with how she performs. She's happy but never satisfied. And that's what I really like about her. Because I trained with her in Austin. And every single rep, she's going harder, going harder. Like, yeah, that was good, but I could do better. And she is on world record pace at practice. And the first thing that she said after she ran the 12.34 yesterday and won was, I hit the last hurdle, that was 12.2. I'm like, girl, you just won USA's again. But oh, yeah. <laughs> the first thing that she's thinking about is her critique. So, like I said, having that type of mindset, you know, the Michael Normans, the Randolph Ross, the Kenny Harrison, that's how you get world records. But I think it's going to be a show with Jasmine Camacho. And they used to train together at Kentucky. So that's a long Crazy. rivalry Ooh. there. Well, Coach Flo, yeah. all that. I'm going to say we can never count Kenny out. Put some respect. That's a world record holder. Facts. Respect always. Facts. But, like, Come on now. It's going to be a race. That's all I'm going to say. It's, it's gonna tough be beating tough, people twice. It's going to be a tough battle. Like, I support Jasmine as well. I, I love me some Jasmine, mm -hmm. too. So, like, I can't really say who I got because I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it neutral. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be a fast race. And I'm expecting a world record. I ain't even going to count. I'm expecting a world record. What about Nia Ali? Isn't she the world Nia champion? Nia Ali, very Nia consistent. Ali something is in coming tank. in. Very consistent. And she's, she's looking amazing. good. She's the definition of she's clutch. Amazing. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She she is clutch. And for she and she's in that world championship final, like with mm -hmm. Kenny yeah. and Jama Jasmine Camacho Quinn. If they don't run to their best ability, like Nia's there. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like Nia's mm -hmm. there. She may not got the world record, but like She got the medal. She got the medal. <laughs> she do. Olympic. And she said she feels like she hasn't even scratched the surface. Yeah. And she said she feels like she has something left in the tank. And, like, I'm not going to lie, that race, she got out. Yeah. Like, her start was just crisp. So, I don't know, man. Mm -hmm. It's in God's hands, whoever going to win. And she has kids. She has kids. <laughs> She multiple. like, yeah, multiple kids. And <laughs> she comes back and she runs ridiculously fast every single time. I don't, like, I can't grasp that. 
It's like an Alice and Felix type of thing. Wait, is she married to Andre? <laughs> yeah, Andre DeGrasse. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they just Grass, know how to win. A fast they just clutch. They clutch, though, because Andre DeGrasse is like that as well, too. Well, like, definitely. Out of nowhere, he'll go, he'll go to the Olympics and be like, oh, shoot, this guy's an Olympic champion? No, most definitely. Most definitely. But we appreciate you guys' time, bro. Two Black Runners live here at Under Armour Mission Control. I don't know. What, what else do y'all want to really talk about? Do y'all have anything else you want to talk about? Does anyone else want to come up? Ben Crawford? Ben Crawford coming through. Ben Crawford coming right, coming through onto the ben spot. Ben Crawford got something to say. I haven't been on Twitter in the last couple of days, um, but I was what? just scrolling through the feed. Bro, Scott Fobble, where you at, bro? Hey, <laughs> no, for real, though. I seen I that. Say, I bro. seen. I know what you're talking about. I seen that. You was hating. You was bro, hating he was big hating, time. Bro. Like, it's crazy. Um, I don't know, but because I feel like a lot of times, I mean, Obviously, it's that Will Lear generation that be hating on the middle distance. Oh, runners. whoa! Uh, oh, you, you glad you better be happy Will Lear gone. <laughs> 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 no, nah, like they were, like they were talking about Cooper and whatnot, and oh, he's a terrible tactical racer. But it's like, bro, you watch that race, like he just flipped a switch, like mm. went from like ninth to second in like 150, 200 meters, coasted it in. I don't know, and and seeing that, I feel like a lot of times, like I bite my tongue on that stuff just because. They, uh, not that I bite my tongue very often, but, uh, they have, uh, people like to, I mean, when you're at the, the top, those guys, a lot of people come from, a lot of people were talking about Cole Hawker and whatnot afterwards, but it's all ebbs and flows. And I think, uh, I don't know, those guys are good, man. And, uh, I think the way they go about doing stuff, um, people, they're cautious to bring in the new guard, but those guys are definitely, I mean, you look at Cole's performances last year, like, he's not going anywhere. Oh, no, and, 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 you know, Jennifer people, uh, <laughs> we're at. Right behind us. Jenna Prandini, want to come on the live podcast? Oh, her Uber's <laughs> here. You take me as a Lyft kind of girl anyway, so he's that's surprising. The They're all living together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought you'd be taking Oregon Taxi. Nah, the, uh. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but not, nah, yeah, I think, I don't know. I see a lot of stuff on, on Twitter recently. I want Twitter fingers to get more active. I think it's, it's good for the sport. If you look at the NBA track, Twitter is fire. Track Twitter is fire, bro. That's how that's most of the promotion for this tailgate. All this butter boys, new gen stuff, bro. Hella active on Twitter. Um, <laughs> hashtag butter boys tailgate. Hashtag two black runners. Yo. Hashtag real talk. Ben, <laughs> what? ben, what is it like for you too though? Like Cole and Cooper being such close friends with them too. Like how hard is it like super nerve wracking watching them, watching them race and then seeing Cole going through what he goes through. Like how tough is that? I would say personally, I'm, I'm kind of detached from it. Cause mm -hmm. I think, I mean, obviously watching the races, I'm, I'm cheering for him, but I'm also like, oh, wait, Reed Brown, like, let's go fifth place. He did yeah, good, yeah, yeah he did bro, great. Crazy, he, he got paid that race. Um, and so I think it's definitely, you know, I have trust in them and, and faith in them that they'll execute and, and you know, they, they do what they're going to do. I, I do what I'm going to do. I don't necessarily think, uh, like, obviously I want them to, to do well and to win, but I don't think it, it weighs too heavy on me where it's like I – like that's like that's them out there racing doing their thing. That's like that's not my thing. Like I'm a I'm gonna hold down what I'm gonna do, and and they're gonna do what they're gonna do. But it is really cool to be able to see though. I think it's a it's a blessing to be able to be friends with those guys, and they're at such a elite level. But yeah, I just thought it was really funny when Scott Fobble was. That was funny. So it's like bro, well, <laughs> sick bro. Like that was funny. I don't know. Admit, not gonna admit, but hey, also on the podcast before we close out, we gotta get MJ on, up here again too, man. Matt, I, I need Matt Parker. Matt Parker. He's, he's right there. He's chatting up some butter boys. Camera in hand, bro. Where's Kadeem, bro? We got to get Kadeem on this. Kadeem? Matt Barker. Kadeem, Kadeem, Kadeem is Kadeem. behind the, the camera. I don't think Matt can hear us. Matt, Matt. I wonder how fast Damn, he how can not hear me? 400 with the, with the gimbal. I'm going to go get him. But yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Chair falling, chair falling over. But I think we're going to just get in uh, Matt Parker real quick. MJP TV. And then we're going to close out. We got to hear this man's takes. We got to hear this man's takes real quick. I just want to hear some more about the 100 and the 200. Oh, you got one minute. Well, give me give me one minute of... Uh, of uh, 58 seconds. Come on now. Yeah, on the stopwatch today, coaching his athlete, Darius Rainey. 45-9. I knew... I, he said, move! <laughs> I was like, okay. My, my, my guys would be shout out to Rainey. Going to USC. World under-20 qualifiers, 400. Let's Only go. high schooler. Only one. 
Oh, damn. Let's go. Yeah, that's, that's fire, bro. That's definitely fire. But Matt, about the meet, what was what was your biggest takeaway of USA's? And what was biggest your biggest shock? Your, your biggest shock? Favorite race? Favorite race? Men's 800. Brandon Miller. Oh my goodness, that because I was right there at the finish line, just waiting for him to see if he made it. Top moment. Top moment. I love it. Biggest shock. Biggest shock. Ooh, Gabby Thomas in the 200. Yeah. Got to be. I was I was stunned. And Brittany. Brittany Brown. Yeah. Didn't that that, that hurt was, me. That one was 200 was yeah. a major upset. So we've got some new faces. I'm excited. Uh, Tamara Clark, I think this is her first team she's yeah. made. So I'm excited for her, her coming out of Alabama. Abby Steiner, 21 7. Dirty. 21 30? No, no, no. no. I, I said okay. that was dirty. Like, oh, dirty. oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, wait, 21. I was about to say, wait, what? 30? <laughs> that would have been even crazy. <laughs> but yeah, man, she, she's on another level. Like, the fact that she's performed, she's been running since December. Wow. I don't think people realize how hard that is. Like, she's probably had at least 20 races on her legs, and she just PR'd. Great coaching, great athlete, you get great results. It's that simple. Who are you most excited to see to compete with international competition? Oh, uh, hmm. I love you would say Steiner for me. Yeah, it's got to be Abby because this is going to be her first taste. Or if I had to go with someone else, Brandon Miller. Got to. He's, he's been, like you said, he's an AAU prodigy. Like, if you ran AAU track, you know you who him. Brandon Miller is. Like, he's been doing this since he was a kid. And now he gets a chance to do it world stage from A&M. Coach Milton, I know he's proud of him, so I can't wait. You got anything else, Matt? Uh, Wings Track Club, best track club in America. I don't want to hear nothing. Well, I'm out. Hey, I think Ben Ben said he had one more thing to say. Bro. Got another thing? Close I thought out. you already had one more thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got too many things to say, bro. I woke up a little late today, so my brain's kind of just getting started. Um, but shout out all the sh all the shooters at the meet, like the people with the camera. I know uh, Joe Hale's leading a a big contingent of of young photographers out there. He's not here right now, but you know you got Anderson Bobo, Ruben Reyna, Jam Figueroa, uh, the boy EA Visuals, Elijah Aggers, uh, Cyrus Hanna. Just, I mean, I'm I'm sure there's more that I'm missing too, but. You know, you go, go back to the house after the meet, there's like five, six, seven photographers just sitting there grinding, like t teaching each other how to do presets, like all this stuff. And it's, it's really cool to see. And I mean, they're even back there right now working on their photos. And so I think, uh, you know, the, the, the future's in good hands, the sport's in good hands. Two black runners, new generation, doing it different, doing it right. I mean, shout out two black runners too. Runner's World, Oprah, nobody's doing it like that. <laughs> The big, they got the big O. Yo, yeah. we got big O approval, man. That's, big O certified. That's like, a, damn. That's what you need. Um, but yeah, I just just wanted to shout out to that. What? Yeah, shout out Jam Figueroa too in his bag this weekend. Yeah, but I seen that betrayal he did last night. But I know, bro. Shout out, shout they, can, out. they can keep his podcast, bro. Hey, shout out Oval <laughs> Magazine. Yeah, shout out Oval Magazine, man. <laughs> Nah, but, that, that was funny, bro. And then we, Drew Hunter be coming up saying, that, "That's so funny, bro. Keep doing that." So I didn't know. I didn't know, bro, was tapped in like that. But, <laughs> but it's good, bro. And a shout out Under Armour and Under Armour Mission Run, UA Mission Control. We were here all weekend. Really do appreciate being able to do this. Would love to do it again. Just letting us ramble and talk and really just talk about the sport we love. And thank you all for listening, tuning in to these two epic podcasts behind Hayward Field. That's amazing to say. We'll catch y'all next time unless we get canceled. Let's get it. We're unless just, we get canceled. We're just I'm two black runners to join our man. Hey, <laughs> Thank you.